Welcome to Church Alive. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Yes, and here in our church home fellowship, we like to go around and greet one another. So if you're at home with your friends and family, let's do that. And if you are online, let's chat below and let us know where you're watching from. Let's get to it. take some time out to worship our God. Would you please stand with us and we can worship together. Good morning, church. Let's all stand and let's worship together. And 
so glad that you have joined with us today. Um, we are so excited every Sunday to be able to be brought into your life and into your world. Uh, you know, you're not just a number here. None of us are just numbers in the eyes of God. We are individual people with plans that He has for each one of us, and whether it's ministry or whether you individually. And so it's just an honor to be able to be able to gather in His name this morning. And we are gathered in the name of Jesus this morning. Can everybody say the name of Jesus on the count of three? One, two, three, Jesus. There's something about that name. And we heard last week when we did a message that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know what? That is such an honor to be able to willfully and, and honestly come to Him and be able to bow our knees before such a great and awesome and holy King you know, he's done so much for it. I mean, well, I mean, everything for us by being able to purchase us, be able to be, provide forgiveness for us, and, you know, all these things for us, for us, for us. And so, what does he want in return? Our love, our devotion. That's such an awesome thing. And I want to read here in Psalms 33, verse 6, starts out like this By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. Verse 7, he gathers the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He puts the deeps in storage places. Let all the earth fear the Lord, revere and worship him. Worship him. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Verse 9, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded it and it stood fast. Verse 10, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He makes the thoughts and plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart through all generations. And I want to go on over to also Proverbs 21 verse 30 because it kind of goes together with today. The verse 30 says this, There is no human wisdom or understanding or counsel that can prevail against the Lord. And what does that mean for us today? What does that mean for us in this new era that we're in right now? What does it mean for us as God is releasing more and more power, more and more might, more and more of His hand, the form of the Lord? We can see all around us the trickling out. It's not a trickle anymore. It's hard to keep up with everything the Lord is doing across the land through many, many people right now. God is a God of victory. God is a God who is a champion. And he wants all of us to walk in that, that victory and that, you know, being more than an overcomer. And so God's plans stand. And his works, his, his desires, that's what prevails. And so for all of us, that's why we bow a knee to Jesus. We come to him in, in humbleness. It's like, God, what do you want? What do you see for my life? What would you like me to do? How do you want me to act? What do you, you know, 
those kind of things. That's that humbleness, looking to Him that He is, you know, you're the one whose plans are going to stand. And so this morning or this evening or when, you know, whenever you're watching this, maybe it's time to kind of shake it off and go, you know, get back up again in His presence and say, God, here I am to serve you. I want to bow my knee before you. God, you're so gracious. You're so kind. God, I want to be a part of this that you're doing in human history, God. You have me alive right where you want me to be alive, in the, in the, in the place you want me to be alive, in the time you want me to be alive. God, for, for, and, and, you're, and it's not for nothing. And so, God, what would you like me to do? What would you have me to do? God, what would, where do you want me, you know, what would you have me to do? And listen and allow his spirit to speak and pour into you. Your life is a life, it, you know, it's, we're looking for lives of significance. Not just success, but significance. And he gives us that himself. Amen. So in just a minute, we're going to go into more praise and worship. And this is a time where, you know, we draw close to him and we, we, ha- we humble ourselves before him. And it kind of begins there. We've got to be humble enough to be able to take instruction from him, be able to know that he is. He is the Almighty. He is the Everlasting. He is the strength of our life. And we're coming to worship Him and to bless Him and to lay ourselves down before Him. And then we're able to get those instructions to move forward in whatever He asks. Does that make sense? Well, let's move forward. Let's sing. And then we're going to come back in just a minute. And in a few moments, I'll come back. And then we're going to go into a time of prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And God wants to be able to change your stuff too. Amen. Well, let's continue. God turn it around, God turn it around, God 
God is doing something right now, right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, yes you are. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Cause He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Cause He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. Cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in. The name of Jesus, God turn it around, 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 God turn it around. Oh Jesus, nothing is impossible for you. You're the God of impossible. Oh, you're the God of impossible. Abba Father, Abba Father. Come on, this morning I just feel like the Lord is reminding us that He's our Abba Father. He's not just our champion. He's not just the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, but He's our Abba Father, our Papa Daddy. And if we ask him to turn things around, will he not do it for his children? Because we are his children. We are his and he is ours. God, we worship you this morning, God. Abba Father, Papa Daddy, will you turn this around? Come on, everything. Papa Father, Abba Father, Will you turn it around? Come on, whatever you have, sickness. Abba Father, Papa Daddy, will you turn this around? Come on, over our nation. Abba Father, Papa Daddy, will you turn this around, around? Abba Father, Papa Daddy, Will you turn this around? Come on, ask him. Abba Father, Papa Daddy, will you turn this around, around? Cause he is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. Come on, declare. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now, right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. Come on, church. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. Come on, declare. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, 
making a way for someone God is doing something right now He is moving mountains Making a way for someone God is doing something right now yeah. He is moving mountains Making a way for someone God is doing something right now The start of my hope is in the name The name of Jesus Turn it around, God 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 turn it around. You know, it never ceases to amaze me every time this team gets together and we meet before we do the altar ministry time, we try to get ourselves our minds and our heart in the flow, if that makes sense. You know, we try to get ourselves, because, you know, we are, you know, spirits inside of a body and inside of a, a soul inside of a body. You know, there's a lot of components there working. We've got emotions. We've got our mind going. We've got our will going. We have our um, all this operating, too, all the while we're trying to live for the Lord and sense His His direction and His um, His ways. And so, you know, we've shared this many times over the year how, you know, only the Lord put this team together. You know, He's the one who brought it together, bringing a world-class ministry team together to be able to come before you. And that's not, it's not, not pride or anything. It's, you know, it's a compliment from the Lord, you know. And so what I was getting at is like before we even started this um, recording, we're sitting there talking with the team about, you know, how important it is that, you know, the busyness in life doesn't kind of distract us from our prayer time because as we don't spend maybe as much time in prayer and we kind of, you know, as we're going through life, and that just, that happens, it happens to everybody, that sometimes we feel a little bit disconnected and maybe, you know, then the enemy tries to bring condemnation and gets us, you know, this deceiving spirit start getting a little closer to us and start trying to throw lies and deception, all these things out at us. And we start, you know, as you're not prayed up, sometimes, sometimes those lies do sound like the truth, you know, about the situation or how you're feeling, all that kind of stuff. You remember the, the Bible says that the enemy masquerades like an angel of light. He tries to pretend like an angel of light, so some of his lying and deceiving sounds sometimes like the truth, and sometimes he sounds like, you know. And so um, the point of this is, is like we're sitting there talking before before we recorded and talking about how, you know, kind of get back at it, get standing back up again and kind of shake it all off and, you know, turn it around. And here we have this song, Turn It Around, Turn It Around. And even the part where when I ask everybody to say the name of Jesus, what was the bridge? What was the main part of that? And the, you know, calling on the name of Jesus. It's, it's just God does that on purpose. The Holy Spirit does it on purpose as a confirmation way that, that tells us and shows us you're in the, you're, you're in the way. You're in the, the place that God wants you to do. Just keep it up. Keep going. Because he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to confirm. And so for you, there maybe today, maybe at this recording, maybe you're hearing something that's confirming for you. Maybe, you know, God wants to turn it around for you. You happen to be watching this right now, and maybe you're in a situation where you know you're sensing God needs you to, to pray and to seek His face. He wants to bring a change. You know, that's not coincidence. This team does not believe in coincidence or luck. We believe in divine appointments. And so for you, we're going to take a moment and pray. If you're in a home church fellowship, or if you'd like to be in a home church fellowship, let us know. But if you're together with anybody that you can pray with, I highly encourage you to pray for the people that are around you. If you're by yourself, think about you can pray for yourself. Ask the, ask the Lord to help you pray. And then, and then now cast that out to other people because other people need your prayers too. Amen? You have an awesome prayer privilege to pray for somebody else and God's hands will move for them. And so we're going to take a few moments more and let the music play for a little bit longer while we're um, 
while you're praying, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap things up. Miss Rachel, if she feels led by the, the Lord, she might ramp things back up again, but I'll still be back in just a minute. Amen? Okay, let's pray. If you're praying, I want you to continue to pray, and, and we're going to stay in this vein. Listen, you, you can never pray too much. God delights in the prayers of his people. You're not going to bother him. Matter of fact, I jotted this down yesterday in my prayer time, thinking about when we are kind of needy and we need the Lord, and it's like I jotted down some stuff. He is not going to look at your faith-filled prayers and weary him with coming to him with faith-filled prayers. When you're looking to him as the answer to, to situations that are going on in your life, and you're coming to him because you know by faith that he can do something about it. And some of the things that he does about it, he might tell you to, that you need to do this or that or don't do this or that. But the point is, is we're humbled enough to be able to go to him and say, God, you know, you're the creator of all things. You bring the, the counsel of the nations to naught. So, God, you, can you help me with this? Can you deliver me from this? And the answer is yes. And, and those prayers to him are his delight. He delights in the prayers of his people. He delights in you. And so, which makes it even more awesome to be able to come talk to him. And so this morning, we're going to do something that's a little bit um, different than our normal. I, I feel like, Pastor Alex, do you have anything you want to share? Do you have anything you'd like to share with the people this morning? Anything just to bless the people? I, I kind of was thinking here on the side, it's like this faith-filled man behind me that sometimes we see just portions of him on the, on the, the video. It's like this, this book writing 
uh, pastor right here that's behind me, I was like, I'm, I was thinking to myself, he's going to be writing a, a, a Fundamentals of Faith book of some kind. It's a soul-winning book. For some reason, it's going to come into my mind for him. He probably never even thought about it, but I think you probably have thought about it. But anyway, so maybe that's prophetic for him. I'm just I'm sharing that even right now as we're recording that there's so much going on in, in different people around you's life. The Lord is doing things, and it's just, you know, your prayer might be an encouragement to somebody else that, yeah, they're hearing the Lord, or yeah, I kind of see that. And so, what is it for you? Where is that area for you? You know, pray, 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 and keep on praying. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to stop with this, uh, and we'll wrap it up. That this is going to be one by the Word of God and your prayer. Whatever your situation is in life, whether it's you're in ministry, whether you're in you're dealing with the kids, or whether you're at work, or whatever the situation is, the Word of God that you're speaking out of your mouth and your prayer, that's, that's the winning. Amen? Get a hold of the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Speak the Word of God. If you don't know what to speak, go pray the Psalms. Go pray them out of your mouth. Let that be your prayer. Pray Proverbs. Let that be out of your mouth. That's a great start. Speak the Word of God back to Him, and then be praying that and allow God to change, turn it around. Amen? Amen. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. We're going to ask you, you can maybe have a seat wherever you are. You can have a seat if you're already sitting down. Thank you. We have a great service for you this morning. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you this morning and allow his allow his word for you believe it and allow your spirit to connect with that and go after it amen amen well god bless you and again thank you for joining us Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you've been enjoying our online services as well as the many different shows that we now have available on the live media network. Thank you for everybody who's partnered with us so far. Some of the platforms that we utilize are free, but the network itself is not. And so it is all being made possible by everybody who's choosing to give and to partner with us. So from here at Church Alive, we wanna thank everybody who's done so. And if you haven't partnered with us already, if you would consider giving into the Church Alive ministry today, we have ways where you can give by phone, you can give via our website, or you can also just mail in a check, and we have all the information available down below. But once again, thank you so much for everybody who's partnered with us. Giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tithely, now it's as easy as sending a text. To get started, text GIVE to your church's giving number. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information, and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount, and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you've made a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Text giving with Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church Alive. I'm Rachel bringing you the announcements for this upcoming week. Make sure to check out our website at thechurchalive.com and our social media platforms to like, share, and enjoy our content. Here's what to plan for. Winter Life Groups has begun, and it's not too late to sign up. We have our fun homeschool and recess at the park on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock to 2.30. Parents must stay with children the whole time. Every Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock p.m., join Pastor Kevin and Misty as they host the Blessed Life Life Group. They will be going through the book, The Blessed Life by Robert Morris. This group will be on Zoom for anyone to join. If you are in the Waco, Texas area and are 55 or older, join Epic Life Group on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. Sign up for our life groups today. And to find out further information, go to our website at thechurchalive.com on our life group page.
Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on the earth and wherever, whatever play, platform you're on. Thank you so much for joining us here. This message is for uh, Sunday morning message for Church Alive. However, you know, it is for the body of believers, which is the church. And so thank you for joining us. We hope our hope today is that this message will inspire you to keep on keeping on to reinvigorate your, your, your hold on the Lord Jesus Christ, to reach up and, and even touch the hem of his garment and to keep on keeping on. That is, his, that is his desire, that is his love for you, is that you just keep on keeping on and don't give up and don't quit, and don't throw in the towel, to keep on going, persevering in this life, which is a big deal to him. And I'm telling you, he promises he promises as we're faithful and as we persevere with him that he does the miraculous for us. And so to this, today our message is going to be, it's kind of, our message style is a little bit differently than it has been in the past where it's kind of like what the Lord wants to speak right this week and he knows who's going to come on these platforms. He knows who's going to be watching. And so this is for you and and so um, we, we, we've had many different topics this year, or not topics, really, uh, uh, words impressed on myself and my team to be able to speak this year, and today is no different. And so today, the message, if you were going to title it something, it's going to be titled, His Word. I want everybody to say that with me on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. His Word. His Word is powerful. His Word is is it's not like anything else anywhere else. And he's put a lot of emphasis on his word. Matter of fact, he puts more emphasis on his word than his own name. You know, and the name represents his character. His word, he puts more emphasis on that. Which is interesting because as I, I we did a prophetic, um, there was a prophetic writing that the Lord helped me to, to write out. It was back actually on January 30th, 31st. But I held on to it because myself as a human being, as a person, I, not, I didn't get off like in a, a sinful way, but you know, um, may not have been as prayed up as I should have. And, and, and so hearing from the Lord um, for clarity purposes, I was, I was dealing, struggling a little bit there. Even though the Lord promises, I'll never fail you, I'll never leave you. So it's never him going anywhere. It's us who drift this way or that way. And I don't mean drift, but, you know, sometimes we just, we're tired. Sometimes the chemicals are not firing just right. Sometimes we're dealing with condemnation from the enemy. And, and, and we feel like we're, we're kind of out of sorts a little bit. And so when we're like that emotionally and, and mentally, sometimes we don't hear him clear. But even though I wrote this thing down... But I wasn't clear to make sure that that was that wasn't Kevin. You know what I mean. So after we wrote that down and issued that to the church, which has gone out, and that was the the one that was titled. You can go to our website, thechurchalive.com, go to resources, then Pastor's Desk, and it's the last prophetic prophetic word that was that was given to me by the Lord. It was titled, "In the Gates of Hell Will Not Prevail." I have not prevailed. And as we were recording a couple of days ago, the music part, y'all saw I came up during the altar ministry time and I was reading stuff at the time of uh, that the Lord had impressed on me for the altar ministry time. Well, some of the scriptures I pulled out were the ones that were in that writing several weeks ago that, you know, I didn't uh, exactly know the place or, the it, you know, I, I mean, I've got to study the Bible too, you know, and so... Uh, anyway, God was like showing me the very words in that prophetic thing. He showed me in the his in the Bible exactly you know where that is, and it was written out before I studied out this message. And so, anyway, I, I don't know if you if that was too woo, around there, but um, it was neat to see that you know I had written all that out, and then I went and was studying for the message, and, and then He confirmed oh, many of the words that were in that prophetic writing it was just it's incredible and so that was really a lot of that prophetic writing and in, in, in about in, in this message is really about you know what what has God said you know what is he saying and 
you know, at the beginning of the year, we started the beginning of 2022 um, with, the, with, our, with our theme of the year called the power of his word. And it's interesting how these pieces are fitting together with the theme that he ha already has and all the stuff that we've heard from him over the year, over the course of a couple of years, the, the prophetic utterances and, and what it says in his word. I mean, we just go read the Proverbs and see things that he's doing right now and will do right now. But then we're back to this again, uh, just in February, um, about the power of his word, how important it is that we believe his word. And so I encourage you to read that prophetic uh, thing on our website. And I, I did the, uh, uh, the Prophet's Hour last Sunday. You can go do it, you read it again. Uh, and so, but he has spoken. God has said. And so it's you and I that have to bow our knee to what he has said. You and I, and bowing our knee means that we submit to one that is much higher than we are. One that has been, you know, Jesus' word has been refined like seven times, like silver is refined in a furnace, you know, by the, the you know, silversmith's refining, get all the purity out. When he speaks something, it's not just, you know, like we, we sometimes say something off the cuff. Sometimes we utter stuff and then we, you know, God doesn't utter stuff like, oops, I didn't mean to say that. When he says something that is, that is like law, I mean, that's law. That's like, it is the truth. And so as I was preparing for this, you know, sometimes the Lord gives me a little here, a little there, a little here. It's like, uh, it's like a, he knows what the puzzle picture looks like. And then he gives myself and you too pieces along the way to put in there as we can handle the pieces. And then as it starts to come into focus, as the pieces all come together, it's like, wow, you know, that's, that's, that's just, I'm not gonna, that's crazy because it's not, it's truth, it's life. But I'm more, I just, I'm so amazed at how the Lord God, his wisdom, his plan, his mercy, his loving kindness, his strength, his power. I mean, he is a good God and he is bringing about in a, such a glorious way his, his word, he is bringing about, is being fulfilled before our very eyes. And so, and I wanted to get to this um, as, you know, to kind of get into our message here, that we're, the message today, his word is a long part of the series, the, the power of his word, which is our theme. And so when he spoke to me this week, and I'm going to read a little bit here and I'm going to share why I'm, I'm it's like, if this is coming out of my own dealings the last couple of weeks with him. What, what's going on in my life? What, what, how am I training? What is my, the practical experiences of my faith? What is those things teaching me about God, the kingdom, and about how the enemy operates? This is kind of what this message is about. So I hope that you hang on and you stay with us. I hope that it, I mean, it'll bless your life and stuff. And so, but um, a couple of days back when I, the Lord helped me kind of get out of this, this little bit of a rut, and I'll tell you how I got into that rut, he spoke this word to me about basically our ministry, the conditions of the world, and all this stuff. He said, this is going to be one with the word and prayer. I'm going to say it again for you at home right now, or you and wherever you're sitting at right now. Your thing is going to be word by the you got to be won by his word and by prayer. And he, the Holy Spirit, will help bring to remembrance the words that Jesus spoke if we have done our due diligence by getting in the Bible and reading it on a regular basis. As we're reading this, I thought about this this morning before I was going to get ready to preach this message to you. It's like I'm in the scriptures, I'm going through the scriptures, even though my messages, I felt like, are coming straight, like right when I get up here, the message is coming right then and there. Yes, that's true, but it also, he does want me to go look at scriptures he's dropped in my heart. He wants me also to be paying attention to that. It's almost like I'm sitting there this morning reading the scriptures and kind of drafting out a little bit of it, knowing that he's going to give me the words to speak at the time we're speaking them. But it's almost like I'm being filled up 
in that time so when I stand before you, I, I, there, there's stuff that the Holy Spirit can bring out to feed you. Does that make sense? I'm feeding myself. The Holy Spirit's feeding me. I'm getting in here. I'm eating and I'm eating and I'm eating. And that way I'm full of seed, full of the Word of God. That way when we stand before you, it's kind of, He's able to bring the remembrance and able to let it flow out. And God's not a respecter of person. Just because I wear, I've got the suit jacket on and standing in front of you does not mean he loves me more than he loves you. He wants to be able to pour in you, pour in you, so that when you're praying and when you're calling upon the name of the Lord and when you're bringing, you know, you're standing up and, and saying, wait a minute here to the, the enemy forces and stuff like that, you, you know, he's able to bring that word out of you in that prayer and that's bringing the winning to you. God is a winning God. God is the one who's called us to the winning side. He is the one who is the one who is triumphant. Remember, Jesus was triumphant at the cross, down at the cross, leading a, a, a train of, ca of captive foes, you know. He is the one who is one for us. And he has made us more than overcomers, more than victorious in him who loves us. And so he's the one, he's the one, he's the one. We're, we stay humble. We stay in loving kindness. We stay in all these things and allow him. But what he's saying is, is that like I'm partnering, like the Lord, I'm partnering with you. These things in your life and situations, what they're, I'm, we're going to win, but they're going to be won because you're willing to open up your mouth also and speak my word out into your environment. That word cannot come back to God unless it does what it's sent to do. So there is, there is power, miraculous healing, delivering power in his word. And so he wants us to be able to understand. And he's been saying this, you know, we've heard this, these messages so many times. It's like, you know, I got to declare the word of God. You got to speak the word of God. You know, got to do all these things. And sometimes how long does it take us to get to doing these things? You know what I mean? It's like I say, as far as advertising is concerned, you know, people got to hear the, the advertisement seven times before it clicks. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But that's why he needs us to be in his the word on a daily basis because he's keep on pouring it in there, which is transforming our mind, getting our minds to think like he thinks. You know, he we have the mind of Christ when we're a Christian as he as we're spending that time with him, so we can utter these things out because it is the word of God which sustains the universe. It is the word of God that created all things. It's the word of God who makes the promises and those promises have the faith in them to, to bring it to pass. As long as we don't quit and give up. If we quit and give up or, or keep uttering out of our mouth the opposite of faith, the opposite of hope, the opposite of believing. When we, when we utter those things out, it's the opposite of faith. When we utter those things out in the atmosphere, it brings... Decay, it brings hindrance, it brings delay and stuff like that. So, you know, this message is about his word. He needs us to put some, to put a little bit of value on his word. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I've I'm, I'm got all this right here and I've got like 10 different scriptures here that we're going to go through. But he poured into me this morning. I ate and ate and ate. So there was seed to give away for you so that might go in your heart and plant. But you might say, well, pastor, I don't even know what to pray. You know, maybe you don't have it memorized a bunch of scriptures. You know what? There's no condemnation. Start today. Start today. Go in the book of Psalms. I'm, I'm, I spent almost a year in the book of Psalms. Never in my life have I spent that long and exclusively in a book because it's such a prophetic book. Go in there and find scriptures that the Lord says that's for your life. That's for your situation. And then when you're praying, you, you can type them out. You can write them out. You can know, I mean... I know many people put the scriptures over the mirror in their bathroom and all these different places. Some can just memorize them. Some have some uh, page of declarations they can pre they can go over speak over their life and begin allowing the word of God to come out. It's His word. It's His power. It is His might to fulfill that, and He is watching that word because God can never be proved a liar. So he's doing the watching. He's doing the performing of the miracle. He's doing all of that. He wants you to partner with him to just get it out of your mouth and believe it. Believe him. And I'm not talking about 
uh, silliness. I'm talking about winning, winning the war, winning these battles, winning the situation. And so this is going to be one with the word and prayer. What's going on in the nation? What's, what are the truckers up to in Canada? What's some of these nations doing? Well, we're taking authority in the spirit world over all of this stuff. It's not just flesh and blood that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the principalities and powers behind the situation that are affected with the spoken word and prayer. They cannot, Satan cannot stop us from praying, nor can he stop God from answering those prayers. It's impossible. And when we're speaking the word of God, it's like taking a sword out. It's the sword of the spirit. And we are going, we're hacking through the, 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 the jungle. And so, um, so back to how in the world we got into this message in the first place. Well, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think, and, and this is the lesson that's learnt, being learned about the devices that Satan uses, the schemes and stuff that he uses. Sometimes we don't even know that we're slowly, that, that a scheme is, put, is, is trying to get to our confidence or get to our hope or get to our, you know, our believing or get to our faith, which, you know, the enemy tries to get to our confidence by trying to get to get some condemnation at us or whatever and then you know get to our believing and then get to our hope and then we start uttering things out of our mouth that dismantles what God is trying to do and it's like Lord God your word says in prayer and thinking Psalms God put a put a watch over my mouth put a watch over my tongue you know help me to watch it you know and so a couple weeks ago, I got feeling bad and all that. You know, when you're feeling bad, you just, you're not very spiritual. You know, that's the truth. Sometimes we don't feel very spiritual when we're feeling bad. And, and so, um, and the more, you know, we, I have a morning time. It's very important to me because it's, it's the time when, you know, if the enemy can get, this is what the Lord said to me. If he can get you in the morning, he'll have you all day. For you, if the enemy can get you in the morning, he'll have you all day which means the deceptive, the downcast, the depressive, you know, whatever the case is, in the morning when the day's new and fresh and his mercies, God's mercies started, renewed, uh, started all over for us, that's a per perfect time to, whether it's three minutes or two hours or whatever, to get, your, to get adjusted for the day. The morning time is to get us adjusted. You know, choose this day whom we will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, you know. So choose this day. Well, first thing in the morning, we're choosing that day whom we're going to serve. We're like almost tithing the first part of the day to him. And so, and, and we were going to want him to redeem the rest of the day. But anyway, so I was feeling down and I, I kind of got uh, maybe not as, not as much prayer during that time. And at, when we're not prayed up, maybe we're not as strong mentally. And we, we, we're, we're more, we're, we're subject to more, downer thoughts or how is this all going to end you know those kind of thoughts and you know all these kind of things they start working on you and so well then instead of praying first thing in the morning my my bride and I on Saturday mornings we like to sit for coffee that is one day a week that we get get up first thing in the morning and we can go and and, and visit and have that coffee time. The other days of the week we try to, she goes to pray, she goes to read her, you know, read the word. I do my own thing until later in the morning uh, and then we can get together because it's so important for us that we, that the rest of the day, even if we're sacrificing the first thing in the morning togetherness, you know, which we're not, we're still together. Um, it just, we want the rest of the day to be blessed. We, we need the rest of God working the rest of the day. We don't need to be, uh, Debbie Downer, uh, all, all the rest of the day because we didn't have that time in the morning. And so, well, there was like, I got feeling bad and then we came home and we were like spending a lot more time together. And first thing in the morning when we wake up, we're talking about, you know, finances or calendar or plant, you know, and all this. And it, then, and then you, we try to get into study later on, get into prayer later in the morning, you know, um, after we're, our, our wheels are already turning and then we're trying to hurry up through the prayer because we you know we got things we have to get to and so there's this there's this series of events that were going on emotionally mentally spiritually and physically because we were kind of 
feeling down or I was feeling. And as my prayer time was weakened a little bit the, and it grew a little bit quieter, not that we don't love the, the Lord, but it's just principles that hopefully this will help you. The enemy, because we're not speaking as much and praying enough, he tends to able to launch a little bit more very subtle, deceptive thoughts or feelings or, you know, these things that affect us. And as we're doing that, we start getting out of hope. We start getting into depression. We start getting into, you know, um, de de depression. We start losing our confidence before the Lord and in which it affects everything. It affects our work. It affects our relationships. It affects all these things. Well, uh, one morning I got up and it's like, I, you know, we got to, you, know, you and Misty, let's just keep our Saturday plan. Let's go ahead and go into prayer and begin getting prayed up. And as I began to take authority over these mind-binding spirits and take authority over these deceiving spirits who kind of, oh, that, that morning, that like two days before I kind of started praying that, um, I was starting to have some really bad dreams, you know, which if the enemy can't get you while you're awake, sometimes he'll send some dreams to you that are, that, you know, the dreams are from one end of the spectrum to the other. But, but stuff, he's like, I don't want to dream stuff like that. Anyway. And so, and then she woke up and thought she saw in, the, in her peripheral vision, you know, these black wispy things, which I don't know if you ever thought you saw something out of the corner of your eye, uh, something move or something run or something like that, um, which we're, since we're habitually living for the Lord and, and consistently trying to live for Him, those would be illegal intrusions into our life. And, and all we have to do is bind and rebuke because you know it's not deliberate sin opening the door for them and giving them legal access. And so Misty, when she was waking up that, that morning that I kind of got the lesson learned, she thought she saw this black cat looking thing in a, jump up on some boxes. We were putting up our Christmas stuff for our bedroom. And then she thought, well, it must have been just, you know, my arm because I was still sleeping. And it's like, no, because that morning I had a couple of different dreams that were not very happy dreams and all that was going on. And so I could see the Lord was showing me that when your prayer time goes quiet and invites Satan to come a lion. <laughs> I don't know if you like that or not, but it's a kind of wordsman. When your prayer time begins to go quiet, you're inviting Satan to come a lion. He, he tends to come lion, and, and, and that's what we have to... So what's the lesson here? The lesson is that this is going to be won by the Word of God in prayer. We've got to stay prayed up and spending time, and, and you might not know what... It's like, Pastor, I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know what to declare. Go to the book of uh, Proverbs... Read through the book of Proverbs. There's so many things that, that would apply to your life. Remember, the Word of God is active and alive. You can read something in Proverbs that was written you know, all these thousands of years ago, but because it's inspired by God and from His heart and hand, it's active and alive even for today. Start picking things that go along with your life. I'm, and, and the same with Psalms. And then you can go find some other scriptures that pertain to your life. But... At get some stuff out of your mouth while you're praying. When you're praying to the Lord, spend that intimate time. When you're praying with Him and you're spending intimate time with Him, He is pouring into you all the while, building you up, strengthening you up. Pray in the Holy Spirit as well if you don't know what to pray. Get some stuff out of your mouth and you're speaking those things out of your mouth. You're just like, God, I'm going to speak this into my environment where I live and over my family's life and all this I saw again, and, and I've been in ministry for 20 years, you know, and so, but yet the Lord reminded me about how important it is to kind of stay prayed up and stay strong and stay, because anybody is susceptible to having lying darts thrown at them and, and, and lying, uh, you know, the, the, the Bible says the enemy uh, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour, you know, his, his flaming arrows are in the form of lies. And so for you, it simply might be for you that you're weakened in your prayer time, you're weakened in your declarations, 
And so the enemy has come a little closer and he's lying to you and he's affecting your mental faculty and your attitudes and your believing and you feel like you're in a rut all because you haven't had that, that personal time with the Lord. It's like a big giant plug. You plug into him in your prayer time. And then as he's powering you up in your prayer time and helping you to get up and get out of condemnation and all that, then it's like we're uttering these things out which are firing back at the enemy in the environment we live. And God's taking that word and changing your circumstances on your behalf. Amen. Come on, can we give God praise this morning? And so I want to read a couple of scriptures based on what I've shared with you. And of course, I've been on it the last couple of days. Again, I felt like uh, purpose and hope and and power from him, not me, but him. It's like, man, we're going after this kid and we're going forward. That's why the enemy wants to try to come and do these. It's slow, slow, methodical moving against you, trying to bring you down because you have tremendous rights as Christian access the throne of God and his power and let him work through you. You do scare the enemy when you're on fire for the Lord. He cannot stop you because God is on your side and he who lives in you is greater than he who lives in the world. Amen. Come on. Can somebody give God praise? Come on. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you. You're a son and daughter of the most high God with you know, access to him, but intrinsic value from him. You've been created in his image. You're, you're not God, but you've been created in his image. And God wants to work through his sons and daughters. He wants to bring victory in your life. And he's saying, listen, I'm, you're, you're going to win this through, the word, through the, my word and through prayer. Are you ready to start speaking my word at? Are you ready to take authority over these enemies of ours? Are you ready to, do, to bring down these, these strongholds in your own life and in the lives of others around you and have some victory? This year is a year of victory. This year is a year of the power of his word. Almighty God has spoken and there it shall, and, it's, and, and it is, it shall be. And so let's get into some scriptures. Let's get into that word and let's read through some of these things and let it be like seeds planting in you that are going to grow up into these big mighty trees, you know, these oaks of righteousness. <clears throat> and you then have some fruit to give away to other people and help other people. 2 Corinthians 2.11 in the Amplified Version says this, to keep Satan from getting the advantage over us for we are not ignorant of his wiles, and intentions. They were talking about a situation that had risen up in the church and they were saying, you know, we need to bring some forgiveness and try to restore this person to fellowship because we're not, we understand Satan's wiles. Now I want to read it through the New Living Translation too. So that Satan will not outsmart us for we are familiar with his evil schemes. He, he is an evil schemer, okay? And he has intentions, but they can come to nothing because we're staying close to God. Go read Psalms 91. Pray Psalms 91 over your life and over your family. Let it come out of your mouth. And in some cases, use I and me in that, in that, or my family in that situation. Pray it over your life. Now, I'm not saying we're not changing the word of God, but make it your, you know, read it as it, read it as it stands. And then if you want to kind of paraphrase it for your life, like, you know, the whole first part of that is he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can contend. I will say of the Lord, he is my rock and my fortress and my, you know. And so for me, I might say, you know, read it just like it is. But then when I'm declaring, it's like Kevin's going to stay underneath the shadow of the Most High where no power or no foe can contend with, you know. It's like, use my name and speak that over my life and my family. I mean, there's another part of that says, um, and no plague shall come near your tent. And God, you, you know, as we're worshiping you, no plague shall come near my dwelling place. My children will not be begging for bread. The children of the righteous will not be begging for bread. You know, things like that. You're speaking it over your life. That's right. And God's saying, yes, son. Yes, daughter. Do that. I'm working through that word. I'm working tremendously through that word to bring these things about. God is bringing the winning to all of us. God is bringing the winning to into all of our, all of our lives. Can you imagine if every Christian on this planet was speaking the word of God and praying with that intimate time with him, 
There's nowhere on earth for the Satan and the, and the, the enemy to go hide out. Can you imagine they have nowhere to hide if everybody was doing that? And so we are not unaware of Satan's devices. We've got scriptures on that. Let's go, on, go all over to um, thinking about the power of the word. Power of the word. Power of the word in prayer. Prayer is that intimate time with the Lord, even though prayer could mean requests, could be petitions, it could be all these things. I'm telling you, that's like your personal time with the Lord. And then, you know, then we make requests and we make declarations and all that. But the intimacy time with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 7 says this. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments. What's an argument? Argument is a lie from the enemy. Arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself against the true knowledge of God. Think about this. The enemy presents us with reasonings and theories and proud and lofty things that try to set itself up against the knowledge of God. How do we win against these things? How do we refute that? We refute it by getting in here and reading. And again, listen, even if you don't have a bunch of scriptures memorized, get in there and just pick up the word and just let it come out of your mouth. That is a good beginning for you. And it, it doesn't matter whether you've been in ministry for 100 years or one year. That's good for anybody. So let me read that. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. We're leading those things captive. Let's go over to Ephesians real quick. I'm just going to let them come out because we've got to get through. Uh, Ephesians 6, chapter 10. Many of y'all know this. I'll read, I'll read on. This is back in the Amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. That's that union with him. I believe in prayer and that intimacy with him where you're sharing your life with him and he's sharing his ways with you. You know, it's that wonderful time. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Who's providing the strength? Where is it coming from? It's coming from the Lord God. He is doing that by our time with him in prayer and declaring that word of God. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully to stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. The enemy fights us with deceits and strategies and lies and all these kind of things. That's why the word of God is so important, because it is our truth. It is the, uh, our truth. It's his truth given to us. So we know how to deal with this stuff. And why would God say we needed armor? We need armor to protect us from the lies, from these spirits that are, that their spirit, like the, the departments of the enemy are, have departments in depression. There's a department of, you know, um, hopelessness, departments of anti-faith, departments of, you know, all these different areas. And we got, we need God's truth to help us to stand up against these things. So let's move on. So number 12. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical components, but against the disposition, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And the evil day of danger is the enemy being able to lie to you and you buy into that lie. And listen, when we buy into the lies of the enemy, the Holy Spirit has, well, it's, it's a work for him to undo the lies. There's so many people that are mixed up in their faith. They've got a mixture of Christianity and half a dozen other religions in them. They're, they've been lied to. They've been deceived at and and a lot of times people that are deceived, they're some of the hardest ones to reach because they don't even know they're deceived. You try to present the truth to them and they don't want to hear it because they're deceived. And so that's the danger that we don't get deceived. The Bible talks about being deceived in the last days. 
And having done all that Christ has demands to stand firmly in your place, standing firmly in your faith, uh, your place by faith, okay? Stand therefore and hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and the moral rest, uh, restitute and right standing of God. Verse 15, having shoe, uh, shod your feet with the preparation, uh, preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, promptness, and readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace, lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one out here before it gets to, gets to your armor. You can quench all those lies and deceits with, the faith, with faith out here before it touches you. Um, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the, the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the Word of God. That's our offensive weapon. Pray at all times, on every occasion and every season in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer, with all manner of prayer, entreaty to that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding. In behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. And I'm going to add 19 too. And pray also for me, to Paul, this is Paul speaking. And pray also for me that freedom of utterance may be given to me, given me, that I may open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news, the gospel. You know, we, we see again in, the, in that one scripture, the, the strategy to see the armor standing our ground, against the lies of the enemy and praying in all form, manner and forms of prayer. We see all that in that one scripture. You know, what can you speak out of your mouth about that? You know, what, what is it something that you can let roll out of your mouth? God is trying to get myself and many of y'all that are the rem remnant of the true church to get in and be able to speak these things because through, through prayer and through the word of God, through his word, we're winning this. And we, we've already won but we're, on the, we're still on the field acting out the game, if that makes sense. Proverbs 20 through 20, verse, Proverbs 22, verse 17 through 19. Let's just keep on going. Listen to this about this wisdom that's coming. Listen, consent, and submit to the words of the wise and apply your mind to knowledge. Go read the book of Proverbs. The war, I mean, the whole Bible is important. I'm just saying if you don't know what to declare, those are the, that's an easy start, okay? So what is the, where do you get the words of the wise? Well, Proverbs is a great place to go get some words of the wise. Okay, I'm going to read that again. Listen, consent, and submit to the words of the wise and apply your mind to knowledge, for it will be pleasant if you keep them in your mind, believing them. Your lips will be accustomed to confessing them so that your trust, belief, and reliance Support and confidence may be in the Lord. I have made known these things to you today, um, even to you, which is incredible. So God's saying, you know, we're going to believe them. We're going to be accustomed to confessing them. Here it is right there. Psalms 33, um, Psalms 33, 6 through 11. Now this is where we make a quick transition into that God said... I said this, and this is what's going to happen. I want you to get in on this. I want you to be get in on this by repeating what I have said over your own life, over your own situation, and allow that work to go to work for you in your situation. Okay? And, and this is this the this is God's. I mean, let's let's just read Psalms thirty three six through eleven. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their host by the breath of His mouth. He gathers the water of the sea in a bottle. He puts the deep in storage places. Let all the earth fear the Lord, revere and worship him. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He makes the thoughts and plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. He the thoughts of his heart through all generations. He put an emphasis on his word and see and allow him to change your environment. That's God wants us to win. He's put it on our heart. He's talking about we're going to win this through, through my word and through your prayer, through that time with him. So 
More time is never, more prayer time is never going to hurt anybody. Proverbs 21, verse 30 to 31. There is no human wisdom or understanding or counsel that can prevail against the Lord. We're seeing all this stuff all around us. God has already spoken that he is going to bring this corruption. He's going to, he's going to expose all this corruption. He's going to bring us into a time of peace and prosperity. There's nothing and nobody that's going to stop him from doing this. He will do this and he's going to do this. We get along, we line up our mouth with what he said he is going to do. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, okay? But deliverance and victory are the Lord's. What are we, and I'm not saying we're a bunch of horses, you know, but, uh, you know, we're, but we're prepared, how? By spending time with the Lord and just speaking out his word. He brings um, he brings the victory to our life. And so I think I'm going to look real quick, one, more, one or two more. Um, let me read this one and then I'm going to close with this since we're over time. Actually, to Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, earnestly remember the former things which I did of old, for I am God and there is no one else. I am God and there is none like me. Verse 10. Declaring the end and the results from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure and purpose. Last one. If you're thinking that you're going to pray, or to pray too much and you're going, to be, he's going to, you're going to weary him with all of this. The uh, Proverbs 15, 8 says this, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination hateful and exceedingly offensive to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Man, he wants to see you daily. He wants to have that time with you daily. God knows that God created the earth and everything in it. He knows that people have got things to do. He created this earth in it to be inhabited he created life to be lived. He created systems in place. He created us to go to work. He's created us to educate our children. He's created all these things. He created us to dream. He's created us to believe and, 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 and hope for a brighter future. He's, he's done all this so he knows that sometimes we're busy. He knows that. But what a wonderful God that he wants to be in on all of your life. You know, we can see the little ones when we see their playing and their activity and their go, 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 and they don't want to sit down, you know. It's like, come here and sit down. It's like they want to go play. It's like, come back here, let's do this, and they want to go play. He's aware of our hearts. He's aware of our minds. He's aware of all these things. And so just like a child, when they recognize that you're even, even like your, your own kids, sometimes they're doing their own thing, and sometimes just on their own, they just come and sit down, and they just want to visit with you and talk with you and share their life. How wonderful that is. Well, your God loves to spend that time with you, and he declares to you that in his thoughts for you, there is winning. In his thoughts for you, there is victory. In his thoughts for you, there is glorious conquering of these strongholds and all this junk that the enemy has been able to do because the Bible says also that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So this morning, God's imparting some knowledge to you. God's saying, listen, I want you to use my wisdom to take this knowledge that you received and apply it. What's the wisdom? The reverential, worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God, it's you first. It's you first. Make my, like, help me to, to put you first in everything I do. God, I want to be on this winning side. I want to be one of those batters that can knock it out of the park by declaring your word. I want to be on the side that's, that's spending that time in prayer and, and, and declaring the, our, the words over other people's lives, you know, just being a blessing, you know. So, and that's this, this joy that the Lord has because he sees us, we're learning. You're, are you learning? Are we growing? Are we, are we changing? Are we developing? Are we, are we given access to the Holy Spirit to, 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 to grow us up? Sure we are. And that's all he needs is a willing heart, amen? Willing heart and some, well, big old pile of obedience too. But anyway, I hope this was a blessing to you. Let's do this. Let's get after this. That's his plan. He brought us into this year. We're still here for a reason and a purpose. And I don't believe God wants us not to be able to see with our own eyes the victory. God wants to show us the victory because that's forever. 
Our faith is forever. Our believing of God is forever. Three things remain, and I'll close with this. Three things remain when all of this world and all of this stuff is in, and he, even when he creates the new heaven and the new earth, the three things that will remain forever is faith, hope, and love. And so I hope that helps you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for our friends and family that are listening. God, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. You're such a gracious Lord, and we want to bless your people. Bless the people in Jesus' name. And for those that have never received Jesus as Lord, my associate pastor is coming to share uh, just a quick prayer with you on how you can receive Jesus. Lord, listen, it's got to start somewhere, and that's, a, that's the place it needs to start. Amen? Well, God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock for the Prophet's Hour and later this week for all the new programs on the Alive Media Network. God bless you. See you later. Well, thank you for joining us for the service this morning. We hope that you enjoyed the message. We hope that the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart. And we just always want to give the opportunity for whoever wants to, to begin their journey with Jesus Christ, to give their life to Him. If you may be giving your life to Him before, but you really haven't lived it, maybe you didn't take it seriously, now is a new day. Now is a new opportunity to make that start. So I want to just lead you in a prayer, whoever wants to to begin this journey with Jesus Christ. I wanna invite you to just bow your head with me and we're gonna pray this prayer together. Father, thank you so much for sending your one and only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to live and die for my sins. And I confess with my mouth today that I believe Jesus Christ is your son, and he did die for my sins. And I accept you, Jesus, into my heart right now. And I pray that you will be my Lord and Savior. And I pray that you will help me live for you and not for myself. From this day forward, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Well, we're so excited for anybody who prayed that prayer with us. This is not a, a special incantation. This is coming from the heart, you beginning your relationship with a God who loves you, who created you, who created everything for your enjoyment. And so we want to help you uh, begin your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have questions, if you need literature to help you start it, if you need to know how to read your Bible, we want to help you. So please uh, leave a comment down below the video. Visit our website. There's places where you can send us a message. We would love to help you get started. We're so excited for you. Again, thank you for joining us for the service. Wow, what a great service that was today. Thank you so much for watching with us. Yes, and if you received salvation today or rededicated your life, we want to know about it. So please go to our website at thechurchalive.com and we want to walk this journey out with you. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.